Tonight on Street Hospital, it's the weekend before Christmas. The ambulance just gave birth to sexy ladies. Oh. I'm not going to kiss you, mate, sorry. Oh, no. If you do end up having a seizure. Mate, can you go away? What? All over New Zealand, the weekend's the time to hit the town and hit the booze. New Zealand's had about a litre of vodka. That's what I'm talking about. Hitting it hard and each other, some party animals are getting boozed, getting hurt, and they're clogging the emergency department. They end up lining the corridors and trolleys waiting to sober up. Wellington free ambulance paramedics are fighting back. On Friday and Saturday nights, ambulances parked in Wellington's party zone become makeshift hospitals. At the street hospital base, paramedics treat the injured where they can on the spot. Thank you, Mr. Paramedic. Typical Wellingtonians, very friendly. Will they make a difference to the binge drinking culture in central Wellington? Can they stop the smashed and trash piling into the hospital's emergency department? And how will our paramedics cope, keeping a straight face when everyone else is off theirs? Trying to tell with us. Uh, tonight's going to be a cool night. It's the last night of work for, for many. Tonight, the holiday spirit's starting early. This could be the team's biggest and busiest night of the year. Jake's doing a degree in paramedicine and working with the street hospital to get practical experience. Craig's an ex-racing car driver who by day runs a security company. On the weekends, he's picking up the pieces on Courtney Place. As they leave the safety of Free Ambulance HQ, the team knows roughly what to expect. Just not where, when or how much. They'll need to hit the ground running. It's the weekend before Christmas. I'll get you to get out and stop the guy behind me who wants to drive in. Parking up in Courtney Place, Wellington's busiest party street, the ambulances turn into triage units. We're expecting the big night tonight. Based on the numbers of jobs that have already happened across New Zealand today, 1,026, that would be a big night anyway, and we're um, caught to 10, so I'm picking there'll be quite a few more jobs to come in yet. Craig and Jake are kitting up for their first patrol of the night. They've decided to get into the swing of silly season with some special headgear. So it's, I guess, the last day of work for everyone's Christmas party and that sort of thing, so we thought we'd get in the mood and pop a wee Christmas hat on and, I don't know, get amongst it, have a bit of fun, look like an egg. <laughs> That's what normal people do on a night like tonight. What's that? <laughs> this have an end of work. Function. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, mate, good, good yourself. Yeah, 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 good on you. Thank you. Thanks, mate. The paramedics patrol the streets around Courtney Place and Piers. They're looking out for anyone in trouble and dodging overexcited party goers. It doesn't take long before Craig and Jake are called over to check on a young guy sitting in a car, puking in a bucket. It's his stag do. Is he allergic to anything? Do you have any medical conditions? Mm. Yeah, what do you have? <laughs> yeah, yeah, are you epileptic? No. And do you take anything for the epilepsy? No, no, don't to put me off it. My concern is that he's had a lot to drink. A, um, B, he's epileptic. Yeah, that's the main concern I yeah. have at the moment. Yeah, and um, he said he's got a slight pain at the moment, whether or not that escalates through to a full-on headache. I know he's been quite well managed, but it's probably a good idea just to do a full, full assessment. Um, they've got a sober driver, believe it or not, and they're going to drive him up there because I don't think he's up to walking, to be honest. The wasted stag is driven to the street hospital base by his nervous best man. For safety reasons, paramedics never run in the street. Craig and Jake walk quickly back to base. And tomorrow's risk is the massive hangover. Yeah, that's going to be quite large. Yeah. The second Street Hospital foot patrol sets off. 24-year-old Steph's realising a childhood dream by studying to be a paramedic. Sarah works in early childhood education. Being a young female medic on the beat has its own challenges. Some of the pick-up lines and compliments are quite funny. 
There was one night I was working and we treated a patient and her friend came to pick us up. And I got out of the back of the ambulance and then another lady got out of the back of the ambulance. And this drunk guy standing to the side just looked in shock and was like, oh my God, the ambulance just gave birth to sexy ladies. <laughs> That was pretty ridiculous. That, that is a good one. Yeah, that was pretty ridiculous. You get the ultra cheesy ones, like... Can we have an ultra cheesy photo, please? <laughs> like that. <laughs> but tomorrow is my sleep day. Wow. So I'm guaranteed to sleep, which I am so happy. Oh! oh. <laughs> it's all right, we're going, we're going, we're going. Hey, are you all right there? My name's Steph, I'm from Wellington Free, all right? Take your time getting yourself up. You're OK. Set yourself up nice and slowly. Apparently, he's right. been in the pub since mid-afternoon. Getting from the bar to a taxi home down. has proved a bit harder right. than he thought. What we're going to do is we're going to set you up and turn you around. We'll get you off the curb, OK? One, two, three. <laughs> Beautiful. Now you've hurt your elbow. Can you bend it and straighten it? Is it sore when you do this? I'm sore when you won't kiss me. I'm not going to kiss you, mate, sorry. No, we'll put you in the taxi, safe. though, OK? No, yeah, we'll get you in the taxi. Yeah, he is. The old bloke isn't injured, but Steph and Sarah still want to get him off the street. While he's good with the chat, he's not so good with the details. Do you know where you're going? No. While Steph and Sarah cope with the wobbly Romeo, at the other end of the street, Craig and Jake have a stag who's just as wobbly and getting wobblier. Step up, bro. Yep. yep. Yeah, one. that's another one. Yep, yeah, good, one. man. And I want your bottom all the way back here. All the way. No, no, no. Up, up. Bottom. Bottom. Good, mate. Bring your feet up for me. Can you just push yourself up the bed a little bit, mate? Oh, I see, Jake. Can you just push yourself up the bed a bit? Yeah. Oh, yeah, good man. In the quiet of triage one, paramedic Caroline gets to work while outside Jake gathers the young stag's history. So when's he getting married? Uh, January. Sweet, so it's not tomorrow. <laughs> not tomorrow. Not tomorrow. Sweet. <laughs> I'm getting married in, uh, in a couple of months and I've already told my best man that I'm not having a stag to the night before. <laughs> just, yeah. So a few nights before, so we'll see you in town like this. Oh, and I'm not having it here. I'll be like in the middle of nowhere, so this cannot happen. <laughs> what is your address? Uh, no, I'm looking to you. I don't want to know where you live. The taxi driver does. Yes, you do. I definitely <laughs> don't. You want to come over there and you want to do things to me. I can't let you do that. OK, I don't worry, it's not a concern. What is your name? Why would you want to Just tell me your name. Because I want to know your name. I don't... I'm Steph, and you have two options right now. You can tell me your address, we're going to put you in a taxi and you're going to go home, or we're going to call the police and you can go and spend the night in the cell. I'll go in the taxi. Excellent. You're getting in the taxi and he knows where you're going. All okay, right. Okay. Watch you. your feet. Thank you. Watch where, you're, watch where you're putting your feet. There's obviously nothing that we can do for him. He just needs to go home. And if we can't do that, then he would have had to have gone to the cells to sober up. Just need to get the ring on your finger. That normally works when they're being too troublesome. I was getting hit on by a guy at the kickboxing and I couldn't really move. It's like. Put the ring up. <laughs> All of a sudden, these things are so interesting. I'm actually going to fake ring. Yeah. Seizure. You have seizures? Yeah. When did you last have a seizure? Oh, five years. Five years ago. Craig and Caroline are worried the young stag showing what might be pre seizure symptoms, leading to a full on epileptic fit. Any other medical problems that we might need to know about? Pain. Pain. Sure. Is that pain? Is that pain like you would normally have when you were about to have a seizure? These are got pins and needles. Whereabouts have you got those pins and needles, In mate? In your feet. In your feet? Okay. All the signs are there that this isn't just a groom to be who's overindulged. Now, mate, I'm going to pop a wee IV line in that arm. In case we need to give him any medication. Jake calls for a frontline ambulance while the concerned best man phones the stag's fiance with the bad news. Okay, 
case we need to give them any medication. The thing that worries me is that... The young stag is getting increasingly agitated. Craig and Caroline will have to work fast to prevent this developing into a full-blown seizure. It's the weekend before Christmas and this very sick stag was found in a side street showing signs he might be going into a seizure. With a frontline ambulance rushing to Courtney Place, the paramedics tried to keep him talking. Of course, I've never had too much to drink. Nor is Caroline, nor is Jake. We're all saints. <laughs> yeah, right, he said, there's another toy ad. Yeah. In the nick of time, the frontline ambulance pulls up. His friends were actually quite concerned for him, knowing his previous medical history and knowing his level of intoxication and really not knowing what, where to go to from here. So it's nice to be able to support them, um, inform them of, of where to go to from here. And also it's nice to be able to treat him here on scene and manage him through into a hospital. How's that for a stag do? Stag do. It's a stag do. Is it his stag do? <laughs> He's the stag, the poor fella. Oh no. One down and a potential thousand to go as the crowds, full of Christmas cheer, flood into Courtney Place. Merry Christmas! Well, my partner's always quite supportive. I don't know where you find, but. She still gets pretty uh, peeved off, you know, Friday and Saturday nights out here instead of yeah, well, at home with her or out with her or, you know, whatever. I think it's just a bit hard on her. I think the worst thing is that we go out for dinner in town on a Friday or Saturday night, I actually want to go home by about 9 o'clock, whereas um, any other night yeah. <laughs> doing this, we're just coming out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, uh, I purposely don't come to town to uh, have a few drinks anymore. I'm just like... Well, some fella's been here for a while, eh? Mate, you alright? Hey, bro. Open your eyes for me, eh? You alright? Are you okay? You right, mate? Yeah, I've been busking here for about like, half an hour, an hour. He's been asleep there most of the time, though. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. But I think he is just asleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Cool. He's happy. A busy frontline ambulance is delivering a special patient for Steph. This ambulance is bringing us a patient. I have no idea what's going on at the moment, so I'm, I'm going to get in and have a quick look. The clearly drunk German girl can barely speak English. Her blood pressure is dropping, and Steph needs to find out why fast. Early. Busto Muda. Busto Glöchleich. It's up to Steph to try and bridge the language barrier with her best high school German. That's all right. She did have a fall backwards earlier. She's denying any pain, but she has got a flash run on the back of her head. Can't collar her, obviously, because she's still actively vomiting, but I think we should transport her to hospital. We were with her for nearly 45 minutes. Her blood pressure was going down. It wasn't anything that I could fix. It wasn't something I felt like I could manage or that we could manage here. So we've called a frontline ambulance who's going to transport her through to hospital where the care is going to continue on. Probably. <laughs> Oh. Are you working here now? Yeah. I used to go to uni with them in Auckland like three years ago. I guarantee we'll get a coffee and we'll get a job. All right, in that case, um, should we order cold coffees? <laughs> They'll be cold by the time we get to them. Yeah, always the way. Street hospital paramedics get a lot of respect from the grateful Wellington public. Uh, just after a coffee. Yeah. And the Christmas hats don't seem to be hurting their image. At street hospital base two, paramedic Ross has a visit from a drunk who seems to have a death wish. See the guy there, the um, muscle man? Yeah. OK, I'm going to go over there, probably knock him out. It's probably not a, probably not a good idea for you, though, is it, sir? No. Yeah, cheers. Craig and Jake's cold coffee prediction might come to pass. OK, I'll tell you what. I'll, I'm going to walk over and hassle this guy. If he assaults me or anything, can you be a witness to that? I, I, I would recommend you don't. Yeah, I know, but he's obviously a puffed up. So you just watch what happens. Ross, uh, Jake. Can you guys get up here quickly? Uh, 
now 26. Craig and Jake head for the brawl, which hasn't turned out the way the drunk guy had planned. We don't get involved in breaking up. The drunk brawler who went looking for a fight found it and is now barely conscious. Hey, stay there. If you stay here, I'll get the stretcher. Yeah. We have R26 outside Q room, assault, unconscious male. Craig, if you can support his head, we'll collar him. After such a vicious beating, the paramedics are taking no chances. Very slightly. Very slightly. It's the weekend before Christmas. Medics Craig and Jake are dealing with the aftermath of a drunk brawler biting off more than he could chew. What well, we're doing at the moment, mate, this patient's a victim of an assault and it's been quite aggressive. Uh, and so in order to prevent any further injury and just to play it safe, we're going to put a stiff collar on him. What was your name, mate? Nothing. Right, so he's got an altered GCS. So I want you just to, just to turn his head slightly straight up. Mate, I want you to remain as still as you possibly can, so you're going to support his entire head, yeah? Can someone just go and watch the traffic for us? All right, so I'm just going to lift your head gently. Very head, slightly. Very slightly. All right. No, 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 no. You move when we tell you to move, please. Pretty when you are, Craig, if you can meet. Nice and still, mate, nice and still. The brawler has himself and 15 pints to blame, but he's lucky. The paramedics were just over the road to stop him being moved by passers-by or hit by passing traffic. What we're going to do now, mate, is we're going to stand, we're going to lift the stretcher up, okay, and then okay. we're going to pop you into the back did of the you ambulance. See all of it? I did, I did see all of it. I want you to do something for me, and that's just to remain nice and yeah, still. Yeah, I will. The brawler's keen to find witnesses, but the police are already on the scene, getting the full story. I told him he couldn't come in here, and then he told me that he wanted me to go get the owner, and then he started uh, getting aggressive towards other patrons and that. And then they jumped in and, you know, they sort of like took matters into their own hands, tried to break it up. I pushed that guy away because he was hoeing into him and that. And, uh, yeah, he still the rest is, yeah, he got taken away in the ambulance. Unfortunate, but I mean, how many times can you say to someone that, uh, you know, just go away, you know, go have a good night, and they don't listen, you know. I think what was really interesting there with him was, kind of, he was arguing with a whole bunch of different people. Yeah. Um, he was a... Victim looking for an assault, really. Yeah, it was definitely, you know, yeah, it wasn't from there, the few was minutes that we were there somewhere prior, else. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's what happens. Yeah, uh, you, do, you do wonder what goes through people's minds sometimes when they have that opportunity to um, walk away from it. How's it going, bro? Oh, no, 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 no you're doing your thing, man. Merry yes. Christmas. <laughs> Santa is real. Oh, my God. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Hey, you have a good Christmas, seriously. Thank you, Simon. Merry Christmas, man. Thank you. Have, have a good break. We will. Oh, Thank you. You don't well, stop me. Not crime really. Crime doesn't stop. No. Yeah, we're not crime. Crime we're... doesn't stop. Crime doesn't stop. <laughs> As uptown bars close, crowds of festive partygoers throng to the late night clubs on Blair Street. Police are kept busy dealing with unruly Christmas drunks, spilling out, in all kinds of ways, onto the road. Most of the people that we saw arrive in town in numbers already appeared reasonably intoxicated before they ever got here. Perhaps uh, an example of what we call preloading. Awesome ambulance, man. Uh, thank you. Craig and Jake carry on their Christmas patrol and walk Ooh. smack into the aftermath of yet another assault on Courtney Place. I got punched by someone. So you got punched by somebody? Yeah, I got punched, yeah. so I punched them back. OK, where did you get punched? Like, just, where did he just hit Just in you? the head, but it doesn't hurt. How many so I punched him back in the head. Yes. How many times did he punch you in the head? He punched me once. Yeah. And I punched him twice. OK. Nice. So, <laughs> so apart from your laceration... Yeah, the old laceration. Are you um, hurting anywhere else? My bull bags are sore, but that's because like, my mate sacked it with the old dummy car. Oh, bull bags. So, that's it? Yep. Are Where you was the fight? Where was the fight? Um, but this young scrapper's still in a fighting mood. As his opponents follow him up the street, Craig tries to keep the fight from kicking off all over again. Guys, guys. Walk away. Come on, mate. Come on. Come on. Oh, just a minute. Right there. Yeah, that's right. Yo! Boy. Come on. 
Come on. Mate, can you go away? Can you walk away? Please. Walk away. Come on, mate. Come on. Let's get your thumb sorted out first, all right? Yeah, sorry, mate. That's right. I got the old thumbnail split back. I don't know what happened, but well, they on a fire. We're not here to be policemen, but sometimes you end up by default stepping into that uh, role. Um, it's not one that we take on board in a hurry either, and it's not our job. Yeah. Here's some guys um, in a black, two black singlets that I smacked out of my friend. Yes. Are they in your back of your van? While the young scrapper's been treated in the ambulance, the angry stragglers harass him to I come out for another round. Now, but yeah. if you tell the cops I have got an assault victim in my vehicle, they can come and talk to me. All right, I will go and yep. talk to them, all right? right now. And sometimes you actually can't work because there's a lot of people around you. So the police are very effective at kind of just creating a bit of a barrier there for you and allowing you to work enough to get yourself into the ambulance. I suspect that you're going to lose your thumb at home at some point. Oh, oh that's right. Okay, it, it'll just grow out. That's right. Yeah, that's right. It's nothing really. It's just the, like the old, the old broken blood. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I don't even know what happened. With the young scrapper happily on his way, the body count is back to zero, and the paramedics can call it a night on their very first street hospital Christmas shift. Now I'm just going to go home and get into bed and hopefully have a sleep in tomorrow. <laughs> I'm going home to a king bed, all to myself. Electric oh, blankets no. are on. Both crews are now going to stand down. We've enjoyed our evening and we've got to head back. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.